Good morning, and thank you all for being here today. The past week has seen the exit of two members of our executive team, former Communications Director Janelle Taylor and former Deputy Mayor and Chief of Policy Stephanie Owens. I want to thank both of them for their service. I am disappointed in the nature of their departures and the allegations made by Ms. Taylor in her resignation letter, and I will address the steps that we are taking going forward. First, let me say that as mayor of this city, the buck stops with me. I am responsible for this organization from the top of the org chart to the bottom. When a problem or an issue arises, it's my responsibility to address it, and I will do so. I'd like to clarify some issues. First, I do not believe that there is a pervasive, hostile work environment in our city. But as mayor, I need to base my decisions on facts and data, not solely on my beliefs. So I'm taking steps to make sure that we acquire feedback from our employees on the current workplace environment so that our employees feel more empowered to report any inappropriate behavior in the workplace. In the case of the statement of our former comms director in her resignation letter, there were no complaints filed, nor was I informed of a problem until the day before that letter was sent to the city. It was during a discussion with Ms. Taylor in the context of proposed changes in our communication organization that she alleged a hostile workplace environment related to her immediate supervisor, former Deputy Mayor Stephanie Owens. Ms. Owens disputes that charge. It's important to respect Ms. Taylor's allegation, even without any official complaint. However, it's also important to respect the statement of former Deputy Mayor Owens, who refutes those allegations. I'd like to take a moment to clarify what the Deputy Mayor's role and span of supervision was. The Deputy Mayor's primary role was policy development, and she only directly supervised or managed nine out of our workforce of more than 3,600. The vast majority of our organization did not report to the deputy mayor. I have decided that moving forward, there will not be a deputy mayor position in my administration. I will have a chief of staff with responsibilities for intergovernmental relations, strategic communications, and policy initiatives reporting to me and working closely with the city administrator. More plan changes are coming, both in personnel and in our organization. Now, in previous months, well before this issue arose, we have strategically moved departments from the former structure under the office of the deputy mayor to the city administrator, including urban affairs, education, and sustainability and resiliency, with the aim of increasing the effectiveness and in integrating the work of those departments into our operations. More changes in that direction are forthcoming. One question that I asked Ms. Taylor is why she did not mention this to me during the eight months of her employment. As I was in contact with her as comms director many times per week and often one-on-one. -on -one. There also was no complaint filed with HR. I see this as an opportunity to improve our employees' awareness and our processes. I've asked HR to develop an enhanced plan to inform every employee of what to do if they encounter workplace bullying or unprofessional conduct. If a high-ranking employee didn't have faith in the current process or an understanding of their options, then perhaps other employees don't either, and we will address that. I believe this highlights the need to also get an unbiased and updated understanding of the working environment in all departments, and I've directed staff to develop a citywide assessment of our workplace climate. The assessment will allow employees to confidentially give us feedback on the current workplace environment and inform our policy decision making going forward. I'd also like to address the letter from some of my campaign team regarding Ms. Owens' conduct as my campaign manager in 2021. Now, that letter has been pointed to by some as evidence of an improper management style by Ms. Owens during the campaign. 
it is not. After receiving the letter on August 27th of last year, I personally interviewed our staff, those whose names were on the letter and those who were not. The letter is not signed. It has the names of three of my campaign staff typed in. Now, one of those three signatories was not aware that their name was on the letter and said that there was no hostile work environment, only issues of communication, scheduling, assignments, and the like. Overall, the complaints range from not being recommended for a bonus to staffing issues to not being invited uh, to meetings and other complaints that did not rise to the level of a hostile workplace. I intentionally asked every person if they felt unsafe, harassed, threatened, or uncomfortable working in the campaign. All responded no. And all members of the team, including the two signatories, remained with the campaign until their election duties were complete. One re-signing with the campaign a few days later for the general election. I hope that provides some context to that letter. It has no bearing on the issue at hand with the city. Finally, as mayor, I have a responsibility to always review my actions and work every day to be a better leader for this organization. This model is what we refer to as continuous quality improvement in grad school. The upcoming changes and the changes that we've already implemented reflect that approach. We've had many accomplishments in these first eight months, from reissuing the historic gas plant RFP to coming to agreements with all of our unions, including police, fire, white and blue collar professional, and award winning work in housing, just receiving two awards from the Florida Housing Coalition last week, and much more. But we can always improve, and that includes me as mayor. That concludes my comments. We will implement these changes and continue our work to move our city forward. Thank you. The mayor is going to take questions. We ask that you please identify yourself and the media outlet that you work for. Mayor, it's Caitlin Davis from News One. You yes. mentioned that Ms. Taylor didn't bring up uh, any issues to you until you announced uh, changes to her department. Was there going to be a change in her role? Can you expand on the changes? I don't want to get into the details of that, but when I talked about com continuous process improvement, the communications area is an area where we want to make some changes to, to be more effective in communications, and there were some changes that we were looking at that would have affected her job description, um, but it would not have been a demotion. And Mayor, do you have a just last question? Mm -hmm. Well, we had a conversation the night before. Uh, again, the only thing that I have is what's in the paragraph in her resignation letter. Um, again, over eight months, um, I have not seen anything that would indicate that the, the relationship was not working. Uh, so basically what we have in that, in that letter is, is what she's described. Mayor, Colleen Wright with the Pennsylvania Times. Mm -hmm. uh, I've spoken to many of your campaign staff. I went with James and a lot of people in the past few days um, about what it was like working on the campaign. Well, I think it's unfair to call somebody a monster when they're not here to defend themselves. And uh, secondly, have you ever worked on a campaign? Uh, that campaign was not different from many other campaigns. And, and again, every person on my staff remained through the end of the campaign. And, and I always, can I finish the question? Sure. I sat down with every person. I've got my personal notes from every conversation from the, the day that letter was handed to me and spoke with every person. Um, there was a lot more than what you're representing here. And again, everyone stayed on the campaign. That letter was delivered in August after the primary. They re-signed for September, October, and November and did a great job. I considered the matter concluded and that we dealt with it. But I didn't see anything that would rise above what you might normally see in a campaign. Could you tell me uh, what assets she brought to the table to make her deputy mayor? Uh, Look at her resume. Um, 
I'm concerned that when we ask this question about Deputy Mayor Owens, I've never heard this question asked about any other mayor's appointments. But if you look at her resume, uh, the fact that she worked in the Obama White House, all she's done with policy, uh, she's the reason that we've been to the White House um, this year as mayor-elect, went back, had a meeting with Secretary Fudge, had a sec two meetings with Secretary Buttigieg, sec uh, meetings with FDOT uh, and other officials. Um, that's what she does. That's why she was a policy chief. She was eminently qualified, and I wonder why you're questioning her and not any other appointees of, of previous mayors. I was talking more to local high school. Could you tell us what those meetings in D.C., what, how that affected or what, what that I, I think I've I think I've answered your question. Can we go to the next one? Mayor, can you tell us uh, more about, you know, Ms. Owens decided to just resign rather than wait out an investigation? Yeah. Um, what, what does that say to you? I mean, did she indicate why she didn't want to wait for an investigation? And as you said, you felt so far things haven't risen to the level of, say, a hostile work environment. Why not stay and wait out an investigation? Well, you know, again, this isn't a circumstance. And I've worked in the private sector as a, a manager and an executive. And so um, I know how to approach these kinds of issues. First thing you do is get the facts. You talk to all parties. Um, I take her at her word in her statement that she didn't want to be a distraction from all the great work that that this organization has done in eight months, and it's not just because of us, it's because of our employees, our administrators, uh, they've done fantastic work. And I think the kind of question, uh, digging into the campaign and making up unsubstantiated uh, attacks on folks as being a monster, you know, one side of the story, is probably what she wanted to avoid for this administration going forward. Any other questions? All right, thank you all.